This video is all about the unique features of the thoracic spine. When we observe the thoracic spine, we have 12 thoracic vertebrae numbered from superior to inferior just by their numbers. So this would be T1, T2, T3, all the way to T12. When we observe the shape of the thoracic spine, you can see how it has this little curvature that moves a little bit forward. And that's known as a kyphosis or a kyphotic curve. So if you've ever seen someone who's slouching a lot or who's walking down the street with that kind of big hunch there, that's usually known as hyperkyphosis. And hyper meaning a lot or more. And kyphosis meaning kyphotic curve. So it's kind of an exaggerated kyphotic curve. When we look at that thoracic region, what makes it so unique is that's where all the ribs attach to. When we think about our own body, at a rib cage, it's really easy for us to rotate from one side to the other, but lateral bending doesn't really bend so much because the rib cage is in the way. Now let's talk specifically about the vertebrae. So I'm just gonna take a few vertebrae off here so you can see some of the variations in their presentation. So if we look at this one that's T1, closest to the cervical spine, you can observe here that the body of thoracic vertebrae number one is more bean-shaped. When we look at T12, for sure, if we look at the body, it looks very, very different where it's quite wide. It's also thick. Versus in the middle, where most are kind of this shape here, more heart-shaped. So let's look at a very typical thoracic vertebrae. We have the body of the vertebrae, the superior articulating facets, the inferior articulating facets, transverse processes, and the spinous processes, as well as that vertebral foramen in the middle. What makes them very unique, though, is if we stack them together, we've got a couple of things happening here. All the vertebrae, when we stack them together, the superior articulating facet of the one below and the inferior articulating facet of the one below, above come together and they make the zygopophyseal joint. When we look to the side, we're going to see a hole. And within that hole, that's the intervertebral foramen. Inter meaning between, vertebral meaning vertebrae, foramen meaning hole, and that's where the spinal nerve exits. What I think is most interesting for the thoracic spine in particular is that we have these costal facets. We have a little part of it on the superior portion of the one below. We have a little part of it on the inferior portion of the one above and that is where the rib will attach to. When we look at thoracic vertebrae, they all have bodies, superior articulating processes, inferior articulating processes, transverse processes, spinous processes, and these costal facets. That's our review of the thoracic vertebrae.